Hello, BookTube. I realize that it's Monday, but just recently, Not Just Book Reviews did a video, uh, I'll try to remember to leave a link to it down below, in which he did uh, Poetry Monday. He read a poem on Monday. Now, there's a small, tiny, despised fraction of BookTube that reads poetry on Thursdays. But I figure if he can do it <laughs> on a Monday, then so can I. Uh, and I do so love uh, exploring poetry with you. So I hauled down the Norton Anthology of Poetry. Very glad I found this uh, at the Brattle. I found this just a little while ago. Yeah, in January of 2021, I found this at the Brattle. And it's, you know, you look at it and you think, textbook. But there's so much in here. It's just such an amazing, uh, it's such an amazing anthology. Uh, so I hauled down the Norton Anthology of Poetry and I want to read you a poem uh, today. Once Upon a Time, it was an absolutely famous poem. School children were made to, re to recite it, to memorize it. College students tested each other on how well they knew it. And its author was extremely well known. The author is now completely forgotten, and the poem is completely forgotten. But nevertheless, once upon a time, it was a, it was a fad. So I hope I do it justice. The poem is The Chambered Nautilus, and the poet is Oliver Wendell Holmes. Not El Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., who was on the Supreme Court forever and ever, but his equally illustrious brainy book, Worm Father. <laughs> and and uh, it's about, on one level anyway, I should probably preface, it's about the animal. The Chambered Nautilus. And if I remember correctly, yes, uh, the Norton Anthology of Poetry gives you a footnote to let you know that, so that it's, you're not launching into ignorance. The footnote is, a small sea animal, the female of which is protected by a very thin spiral shell, pearly on the insides, and whose webbed arms on its back were once thought to function as sails. I'm sure that you could Google Chambered Nautilus, and you'd get a wonderful picture of what, of what inspired this poem, because Holmes came across one. Uh, the wreck of one. The, I came across one, not a living one, not a living chamber nautilus, but a, a, the relic of one, and it inspired him. Uh, so this is the chambered nautilus by Oliver Wendell Holmes. This is the ship of pearl, which, poets feign, sails the unshadowed main, the venturous bark that flings on the sweet summer wind its purpled wings, in gulfs enchanted, where the siren sings, the coal reefs lie bare, where the cold sea maids rise to sun their streaming hair. Its webs of living gauze no more unfurl. Wrecked is the ship of pearl. And every chambered cell where its dim, dreaming life was wont to dwell, as the frail tenant shaped his, glowing, his growing shell, before thee lies revealed, its irises, its iris ceiling rent, its sunless crypt unsealed. In other words, the narrator is telling you this is a broken chambered nautilus. He's not seeing it in the ocean. Uh... Year after year beheld the silent toil that spread his lustrous coil. Still, as the spiral grew, he left the past year's dwelling for the new. Stole with soft step its shining archway through, built up its idle door, stretched in his last found home, and knew the old no more. Thanks for the heavenly message brought by thee, child of the wandering sea, cast from her lap, forlorn. From thy dead lips a clearer note is born than ever Triton blew on his wreathed horn. While on my ear it rings through the deep caves of thought, I hear a voice that sings, Build thee more stately mansions, O my soul. As thy swift seasons roll, leave thy low vaulted past, let each new temple, nobler than the last, shut thee from heaven with a dome more vast, till thou at length art free, leaving thy outgrown shelves by life's unresting sea. You see there, Holmes sees in the, the Chambered Nautilus a, a metaphor for not only life, but especially faith, that you should be outgrowing your old houses, that you should be constantly moving into new homes that are bigger and prettier, that that should be the progress of your soul. It should be the same thing as the Chambered Nautilus, moving from one beautiful pearly spun home to the next, which is even prettier. Kind of nice. Uh, kind of nice. And in fact, beautiful in its own way. What I wouldn't give uh, for a new volume, a new lovely annotated volume of the poetry of Oliver Wendell Holmes. What I wouldn't, we'll never see it, but what I wouldn't give for such a thing. Oh my. Uh, if any uh, enterprising publishers are out there and are thinking, mm, that does sound like a good idea. I'd be happy to write a 30-page introduction for free. 
that part. But in the meantime, I figure Oliver Wendell Holmes has never been read on book two before. We might as well do his most famous poem. Or one of them, anyway. He also wrote a great poem about an old friend of mine. <laughs> but, uh, but the Chamber Nautilus will do for now. And if somebody does a Poetry Tuesday, I'll be right on board. <laughs> so I'll wrap this up for now, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, book two.